The Hadley Institute for the Blind and Visually Impaired presents iFocus, tips on using the vision accessibility features in iOS. In today's installment, we'll look at exploring the low vision settings. Hello, my name is Douglas Walker. I tell you, I am super excited about today's video. We've done a ton of videos that focus on how to use VoiceOver, which is Apple screen reading software. However, in today's video, we'll be checking out some of our most popular low vision features. You know, it really is fantastic that our vision accessibility features for Apple products are built right into our device because this means that we don't have to purchase any third-party software in order to make our device accessible. And uh, that's pretty great. So if we're thinking about purchasing an iPhone, an iPad, or even an iPod Touch, it's great to know that our iDevice will be ready to use right out of the box. Now, if we're completely new to using our device and uh, we need to use magnification software for enlarging our screen, well, we might just want to check out our Using Zoom Gestures iFocus videos first. It really does a pretty good job of explaining exactly how to begin using our Zoom Gestures. All right, so let's get started exploring our low vision accessibility settings. Okay, during today's iFocus video, I'll be using our zoom or magnification feature because, well, most of what's on our screen is just way too small for me to see. Uh, now, our accessibility settings can be found within our settings app and uh, our settings app is right here on our desktop. and. Uh, We'll just tap it to bring up our settings menu. Now, when our settings menu first opens, we know that we're presented with two panes or what Apple likes to call panels. Our panels simply consist of two list of buttons or items down each side of our screen. Our left panel acts a lot like headings or content areas that we're able to select. And uh, if we touch one of our headings or areas here on our left, it opens up a whole new panel here on the right-hand side of our screen. Also, if we touch one of the headings on our left, we notice that it will be highlighted or turned blue. And if we look, we notice that our general button here in our left panel is already highlighted. So we know that everything here in our right panel is, of course, under our general options. And uh, this is exactly where we want to be because our accessibility settings are under our general options. All right, so we'll just touch our accessibility button to find all of our low vision settings. Now, as we navigate today, remember, we'll be using our Zoom feature. So, uh, hey, we'll get to see Zoom in action right away. Okay, we just need to look in our right panel here to find our accessibility button. And uh, we'll go ahead and just touch our accessibility button. And yeah, we'll touch. Great, our accessibility options, of course, have all opened and uh, they're all listed here. Okay, we can always go back to our previous list if we like, simply by touching our back button here in the top left corner of our right panel. However, the items that we're looking for, of course, are right in this list. So we'll begin by just moving down and exploring our list here. Okay, we notice that voiceover is the first item here in our list. Now, voiceover is, of course, uh, Apple screen reading software, and we won't be covering voiceover in today's demonstration because we're just focusing on our low vision features today. All right, if we look, we see that Zoom is the second item here in our list, and Zoom, of course, is our magnification software. So let's just touch our Zoom button to open it up here, and uh, we'll go ahead and touch Zoom. Okay, we see, of course, that Zoom is currently turned on. Well, because I need it for navigating, right? Uh, and if we look here, we'll see an on-off toggle switch that we can simply tap to turn our Zoom feature on and off. Uh, we also have a couple of beginning instructions just below this that will help us begin using our Zoom feature. Okay, we aren't going to be covering how to use Zoom in today's video. Remember, we have an iFocus video called uh, Beginning Zoom Gestures that cover Zoom in great detail. So uh, let's go back to our accessibility list and uh, explore some more of our low vision features here. So we'll just need to go back up 
and uh, activate our back button here. So we'll just touch our back button. Great, here we are back in our accessibility list here. And uh, just below our zoom feature here, we have our magnifier setting. Uh, all right, it really is fantastic that we have a built-in magnifier that uses our device's back-facing camera to view images that we can then enlarge on our device's screen. Now, this is a feature that I really do use all the time, and uh, I use it for everything from checking the temperature on my thermostat to reading price tags and uh, even things like reading the items on a menu in a restaurant. Uh, I tell you, I really do use my magnifier uh, for just about everything. Uh, now, it's great to know that we have an iFocus video called Using Our Magnifier uh, that we also just might want to check out. Okay, just below our magnifier option here, we have our display accommodation settings. Now, our display accommodations really do give us a lot of control over all of our device's color settings, uh, as well as our background contrast. So we'll go ahead and we'll just touch our display accommodations button here and uh, check it all out. Great, our display accommodations here have all opened and uh, at the very top of our list here, we have our invert colors button. Now, this feature does exactly what you would expect. However, it does it in a way that goes beyond simply inverting our colors to their opposite. Uh, it actually inverts them in a way that makes them very visually appealing or easier on the eye. Uh, now, this is a great low vision feature that helps reduce glare in different applications, such as mail, pages, or even notes. Now, another plug here, we have an iFocus video called Setting Up Smart Invert. So, hey, there's another video that we just might wanna check out. Okay, so let's go ahead and head back to our main accessibility list. And uh, we'll just go ahead and tap our back button here. Great, just below our display accommodations button here, we'll find our speech button. Now, we have some really great speech features here. So uh, let's go ahead and just tap our speech button here and we'll quickly check it all out. So uh, we'll just tap speech. Okay, so our speak selection feature is the first item in our list here. And uh, our speak selection feature is another one of those items that can really help to reduce eye fatigue. Now, this feature really is super useful for reading smaller pieces of text that we selected. And uh, I'll tell you, that's really great. Okay, so our next speech item here is our speak screen feature. Now, this feature gives us the ability to read larger pieces of text. Uh, now, this is a great feature to use for reading entire emails or the books in our iBooks app and uh, even longer articles on the internet. I tell you, it can really help us to uh, keep from having so much eye strain by the end of the day. And uh, no surprise here, right? Uh, we have an eye focus video called using the speak screen feature. And uh, you know, this really is another feature that I use every day. Now, for the sake of time, we aren't gonna be able to explore every single item in our list here, but it's really great to know that we have some additional speech features here that are really gonna help us to customize our device so that it works just right for us. All right, how about we head back to our main accessibility list here and uh, we'll just tap our back button here. All right, so the next item in our list really is my favorite low vision accessibility feature. And this is our large text feature or what Apple likes to call dynamic type. Now, dynamic type is super handy and uh, it's gonna enlarge the text across all of our native apps like our calendar, our mail. And uh, as we see here, we can even enlarge our text you know, right here in our settings app. All right. Last plug here, I promise. Uh, we have an iFocus video called Adjusting the Text Size. So that's another iFocus video that you, I tell you, really gonna wanna check out. Great, 
Now, the next item in our list here is our bold text feature. And uh, this is a feature that we already have turned on. Now, we know how Apple likes to use those really thin fonts, and uh, our bold text feature really helps to make these fonts easier to see. All right, now, when we first turn this feature on, a dialog box, or what Apple calls a pop-up menu, is going to appear, and our dialog is going to tell us that applying our bold setting is going to restart our iDevice. Okay, if we tap continue, of course, our device is going to restart, and our new bold text setting is going to be applied. And uh, as we can see, it really does make a huge difference in the thickness of all of our text here. Okay, so let's move on down through our list here and check out our next feature. All right, and this is going to be our button shapes. Now, our button shapes feature makes identifying the buttons on our page so much easier. Now, of course, this is an easy feature to turn on because there's of course, simply an on-off toggle switch right here in our list. And uh, I tell you, we can see how it really can help uh, by enlarging our back button or giving us an outline around our back button here. And uh, so that's really great. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll move on down our list here. Now, our next feature is our increased contrast feature. And uh, as visually appealing as iOS can be with its kind of transparent backgrounds and uh, kind of muted pastel colors, it really gives some of us low vision users a lot of difficulty at kind of determining what's a background and uh, what's our relevant text. So our increased contrast feature here is going to give us a nice bold background or solid background that's going to make our screen's text so much easier to see. Okay, we only have a couple of more options under our low vision settings, and the next item in our list is our reduce motion feature. Now, we know how Apple loves to have different motion effects, and uh, these typically occur when we activate or close any of our applications. You know, our items will kind of fly into place across our background, and our app icons will kind of hover above our background. And this can be really cool. However, it can at times be very visually confusing. So Apple has been kind enough to give us a way to turn our motion feature off. And uh, we can do this by just tapping our reduce motion button. I tell you, I really love that we have the ability to reduce the motion of the items on our screen. Okay, we have one more feature to explore before we finish today. And this is our on-off labels feature. Now, this is a feature that's really subtle. However, it shows just how far Apple is willing to go to make their device accessible for everyone because toggling on our on-off labels button simply places a number one or a number zero next to our toggle switch. Now, this might not seem like that big a deal. However, this is really useful, especially if we maybe have issues with color or if we're using a refreshable Braille device. So that's pretty great. All right, so that pretty much covers all of our low vision accessibility features. And uh, as we can see, we've been given a ton of options here. So it's really great to know just how far Apple has gone to make it possible for us to be able to totally customize our iDevice so that it works just right for us. Again, my name is Douglas Walker. Take care, and I'll see you next time. For more from the iFocus series, including many other topics of interest to individuals with vision loss, visit the videos at Hadley page on the Hadley Institute for the Blind and Visually Impaired website at www.hadley.edu.